Welcome. I'm standing in one of the archways of a step well. A step well in the heart of a very, very busy city. The capital of India, New Delhi. Surrounded by high-rise buildings and bustling traffic. One would not even know this place exists unless you study about it or look, look it up on a map and look for someone who really knows how to get to this place. And so, here we are at a step well in New Delhi looking at just this beautiful architecture. A step well is basically a cistern made by ancient kings, particularly kept for the times of dry seasons where water would just be collected. Um, this one, for instance, has about 108 steps all the way going down. This is also a unique step, well, for it even has a staircase all the way going down for there are those who just have steps along the walls. But this is a pretty unique and a very fascinating step well that's found in the heart of New Delhi. It's interesting when you think about this interesting marvel of architecture. For as the water collects and rises up through these levels, one is able to have water during dry seasons. But there's something interesting that the Lord says to us in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 2. And he's speaking about the condition of Israel. When he says these words in Jeremiah 2 and verse 13, he says, My people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. You know, it's interesting, when I, when I look at the step well, history tells us that this step well was known to have black water, not very pure water. It wasn't out of a great beautiful source of a great fountain of water. We just collected water and over time it would get dark and murky. Also, a steppel would only have a very limited source of water for you during dry seasons. And so the Lord looking at a steppel like this in the condition of Israel, the Lord was saying, Israel has made that same mistake. They've, in fact, in the words of the Lord, they've committed an evil. They've forsaken me, the fountain of waters, and have gone out after the comfort have gone out after these pagan gods who are nothing but dark, murky waters. The more I think about the condition of Israel, I'm beginning to think about your life and my life. How many times in our lives when we're down and broken and destitute and in deep despair, we turn to the dark, murky waters of this world to try and find comfort in our spiritually dry seasons. We feel like this can really satiate our thirst for comfort and peace. But they only leave us more empty and in vain. Much more disturbing is the reality that these temples only hold a limited amount of water. And that's what the Lord was saying to Israel. He says, why would you go out after broken cisterns that can't hold? And if ever they do hold, they only hold a limited amount of water. Why would you forsake a living fountain of life and go after all these limited sources? Friends, I think about it and I ask myself the question as I ask you the question. Why do we settle for the limited when God is the unlimited source of life and comfort and joy and peace that passes all understanding? It's interesting how the Lord uses a very particular word in the Hebrew. He says, my people have forsaken me. The word simply means to lose in your grip. And in times of challenges and the storms of your life and my life, the Lord is saying, I do not expect my people to lose in their grip on me. In fact, the Lord says, it's an evil for my people who I never lose in my grip on them, for them to lose in their grip on me. I encourage you today, no matter what you're going through and how dark a time you may be going through right now, I plead unto you to look unto Jesus, for there is no other fountain of life for you and me. And the Lord is saying, 
in very clear and very powerful tones that I want you to come to me for that living spring of water. I am that rich fountain, that rich source of life. Why would we settle for the limited when God has the unlimited abundance of life for you? I invite you today. It is my prayer that you and I will run to Jesus, the fountain of life, the fountain of the abundance of peace and comfort that we can only find in His life. Let's take some time today to call upon Him. I know that He's hearing and answering our prayer. This is my prayer for you in Jesus' name. Amen.